Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. My hands ache. The ache builds as you squeeze your hands together. Were your fingers always so thick? Your skin always so sticky? Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly. Your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. We're all... We're all just exhausted. Lower the blade before you do something foolish. I cannot trust my own mind. So it seems I must trust yours. I will wait. But know this. I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. I came just in time. You are transforming. know your voice. I've heard it before. Yes, you have. I saved you before. <sighs> and I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. Take a hand. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. Fight for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. Feel better, I promise. Glick. I had a dream, as we all did, I suspect. Someone came to me and promised to protect me while claiming that the parasite could empower me. The parasite has taken root, it would seem. 
Every word, every promise, it is geek deception. You're right. We should ignore this dream figure at all costs. A wise choice. These parasites are a threat to be destroyed, not an opportunity to be exploited. I had a wild dream last night. This beautiful entity came to me, promised to protect me, told me the parasite in our heads could give us power. I had a similar dream. Uh, a side effect of the tadpole. Sounds like it. What did you make of it? I think it's some sort of psionic trick. I didn't believe a word it said. Damn right. Things like a splinter. We just need to find a way to squeeze it out. My apologies. Huh. Not quite myself just yet. I had the strangest dream last night. A visitor came to me. A vision of unparalleled beauty and power. She told me she was watching over me. Protecting me. And that our tadpoles could prove beneficial if we embrace what powers they have to offer. An uncanny apparition. Not entirely sure what to make of it. I had the same dream. A similar visitor. With a similar message. Very curious. In all my readings on the effects of illithid parasites, I've never come across any accounts of correlating dreams between infected parties. Another unique quality of our predicament, perhaps. Hmm. Are you inclined to take these visitors at their word? I'm not sure. Such an apparition has its own motives, whatever it told us. Nothing wrong with maintaining a healthy suspicion in such matters. Still, it might be wiser to keep an open mind on the matter. Our visitors' promises of aid might yet bear valuable fruit. Did you have any strange dreams of late? Vivid ones. It happened to you as well. Damn. I was hoping my imagination had gotten the better of me. But this must be something more. This dream companion wanted me to use the tadpole. Use its power. Whoever it was claimed to be an ally, but... I don't know. It seems like we can't escape this mess, in the waking world or otherwise. I had a dream last night. A vivid one. And so did you, judging from the way my tadpole is tingling. Someone came to me and promised to protect me while claiming that the parasite could empower me. Tempting as these powers sound, we should recognize this dream for what it is, the tadpole's little trick. No good ever came from trusting honey-tongued strangers conjured up by illithid worms. Hmm. We should have little to do with these tadpoles as we can. Well said. This dream figure is no friend to us. I had the strangest dream last night. There was a visitor promising me protection and all sorts of delicious powers from the parasites in our heads. Given our shared affliction, I suppose you had a similar dream. I did. Excellent. Now we can see what these tadpoles can do for us. Astarian, I... I don't trust it. We should avoid using these powers. Is there a reason you're such an utter drip? I mean, do you have some sort of condition? Honestly, it's like you hate good news. Did you actually want something, or are you just here to spoil my fun? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> what do you know about mind flayers? Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flayer specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. And they're parasites. Do you know anything about them? As a matter of fact, I do. But why do you? 
Not only have I encountered a mind flayer, I killed one. That... that can't be. I was once captured by mind flayers before. I'm lucky to be alive. You're mad! But... Tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Malaise is one word for it. More like psychic transference. Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers. Unless... Unless you've been infected with one of their parasites. That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. Hmm. If only your disbelief could alter facts. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Examine me. Find out for yourself. Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet gods! Quit the shouting, would you? Can you help me? I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. You see that I what's it floating about? Best hope it don't take a fancy to ya. Unless you like playing hide and seek when you're trying to take a damp. What is it? It's a floating eye, mate. What do you reckon? Bloody spying on us. The bigwigs at Moonrise like to be involved, the drow says. Load a trollop. Just don't trust us to do what we do best. Killing things. Your scouting party has not returned and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. I ain't no use without my worms. The lads will make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of. One of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul in such a grotesque form. The Absolute has a place in her heart even for Dathir. Her heart is more generous than mine. Join my hunt, fairy, and obey me. I'm on a hunt of my own. I'm looking for a druid named Halson. Interesting. What do you know of this druid? I have orders to capture him. If you were sent here to hunt him, perhaps you can help me. The druid makes his home in a nearby sanctuary where his followers worship a false God. I intend to find it and destroy it. There is a weapon the Absolute seeks. I'm sure those wretches have it hidden away there. We will find it amongst the dead and the ashes. Her excitement is palpable. She lingers on thoughts of victory, of unbelievers blood spilled, and of the weapon. She will seize it in the Absolute's name. 
You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks. It's the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the Goblin camp. Her mind focuses. The cultists cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. She is seeking the grove you visited. Already you feel her mind closing around yours. If she finds the grove, everyone there will die. I need to throw her off the trail. My patience wears thin, true soul. The hunt must begin. Your hunt would desecrate an ancient place of calm. I will not let that happen. You would dare! Guards, to me! This one is a true soul parasite. It can enhance you. You can absorb its potential. Open your mind to it. You already know how. No. We must keep the parasite out. You are not ready. That's all right. But try to overcome this resistance sooner rather than later. It will make things much easier for you. You know, if that parasite isn't to your taste, I'd be happy to consume it in your stead. I don't relish the thought, but if you're going to just leave it sitting in your pack, well, one of us should try it. I'm surprised. I didn't think you'd be interested in a slimy tadpole. Oh, I have my reservations, no question. First of all, it looks disgusting. Second, there's a non-zero chance that it'll turn me into a purple glistening monster. But if it doesn't, who knows what kind of power we could unlock. And power is always worth a little risk. Sure. It's in my pack if you want it. Excellent. I'll have a rummage around and help myself in my own good time. Thank you. Your generosity is appreciated. Seen this mess? Flaming Fist Thuggo took a chunk out me arm last raid out. You're lucky to be alive. The Baldarian militia are fierce warriors. Fiercest thing about them was the wailing. Till we put an end to it. Ain't none can stand against us now. Not with the Absolute in our corner. Steal something. Or, or act the bollocks, will ya? I'm itching to throw someone in the brig. It'll be fun. I promise. See? It squealed! <laughs> Hit it again! Keep your hands steady, three. <clears throat> Stop them! Free me! Again! Again! Make it squeal again. What the hells are you doing? We're juicing it up. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wargs. And it makes funny noises. We made it squeal. Look, look, you'll see. Give me that rock. I'll show you. Release the bear immediately, or face my wrath. All right, all right. If you're gonna throw a tantrum about it, never seen someone so worked up over a stupid animal. We'll be the ones squealing if we piss off the bear hugger. Hope you can control the furry bastard. Good. Now they die. Let's do this. Time for blood. Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. Not only do you speak with a bear, but you free it too? <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Your Halson? The master Halson of the Emerald Grove? Yes, but just Halson will suffice. Unbecoming to demand honorifics from the one who saved my hide. I've been to the Emerald Grove. It's in danger. I am aware. 
I foolishly left it vulnerable to this rabble. There's work to be done. Uh, that look in your eyes. I've seen it before. Are you feeling all right? Oak Father, preserve you, child. You're infected, aren't you? The Mind Flayer's spawn. But... something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the Absolute like the true souls do. How is this possible? I escaped from an illithid ship after being infected. Maybe the process was interrupted. Perhaps. But I wouldn't want to place all my faith in blind luck. It's no coincidence that you found me here, I'll wager. You're after a cure for this parasite. I've been studying these parasites for a while now. Ever since I discovered these so-called true souls are infected with them, someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say, I can't undo that magic, which means I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. I didn't find what I came here for, a way to remove the tadpoles, but I found the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That must be where these enchantments are placed on them. And it's where you'll find your cure. Tell me what you've learned about the tadpoles' origins. I overheard that the cultists are sending all of their captives to Moonrise Towers. Innocents go in, true souls come out. Given that all of these true souls are infected, it has to be the source for this magic. If you want to find a cure, you must head there and discover how the tadpoles are being manipulated. You seem to know a lot about this. Will you come with me to Moonrise? I wish I could. But there's still work I've yet to finish. Blood I've yet to spill. I've no right to ask more of you. But if you could help me, I'd be free to join your journey to Moonrise. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. Karga was swayed by Shadow Druids. She nearly sealed the grove. Karga. I should have suspected she'd take things too far. I'll deal with her when I can. But there are other matters to attend to before that. Help me kill the leaders of this horde. Save my grove. Then I will help you. Three deaths could win us peace. The Drowm in Thara, the Hobgoblin Draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. Having a shape-shifting bear druid at my side might make things easier. My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Be warned. My presence could make things more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. You're right. Stay here then. I'll return. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. Sugan al Shukok, or Tashokek Dors! I command you, corpse. Speak! Reveal truth to the Absolute! By Baldurand's bones. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Suga Nalsukuk! This is the big boss. Strike him down. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon, and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. 
The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. If it isn't another true soul. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. What profane ceremony is this? Guess you're a thick one, so I'll tell it straight. We're gonna make the carcass talk. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks. It's the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the goblin camp. Her mind focuses. Their suspicion cannot be aroused. They cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. Was, was this the Mind Flayer that tortured me? This Mind Flayer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Yet it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. It may be best to leave before the Mind Flayer can identify me. Your skull sizzles with Ragslin's displeasure. His mouth is still, but you hear his demand. I speak for the Absolute, and I say, you stay. And I speak for the Untamed Wild, and I say, enough! This ends here. Heretic! The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order of things is in danger. Thanks to them. <sighs> All the leaders are dead. The grove's safe. You did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. I've done my part. Now, tell me about Moonrise. Let's get out of this pit first, Lee. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. Zevlor, by Delt's virtue, the Blade of Frontiers? What's happened, Will? I paid the price of angering the wrong devil. Believe me, I understand better than most. A moment passes as Zevlor contemplates Will's words. He then turns his attentions to you. A scout just reported. The Goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. You can keep your coin. Very good of you. Thank you. Halsin will likely want to thank you too, Mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corker. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave, but perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. Of course. We'll see you there. Watching gods. While I was training children, you were out cutting down an entire goblin camp. I expected goblins at our gate any moment. Glad to say that you made a prettier sight. With the goblins dead? We might actually make it to Baldur's Gate. I'd have put good coin on you running off into the sunset. But you did it. You stopped the goblins. Thank you. You took care of the goblins. Nice work. I'm glad you came through it alive. We owe you. More than we can repay. I hate you. You killed all the goblins and now we can't practice swords anymore. I'm glad you didn't die. 
No discounts once I'm running the wider Baldur's Gate mind. Mattis says we should say thank you. Don't know why everyone's cheering. We're just going back on the road. You do good work. If you can handle more than goblins, might be I'll have use of you in Baldur's Gate. God, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. Hope the neighbours are a bit more welcoming. I knew this would come right if we just stayed positive. Not that your blade didn't help too. You saved us! Just like Baldy Ron! I left my sword in the cave. Don't tell, but I don't want to touch it again. It's all right. Don't tell anyone, but I was afraid too. It smells bad out here. I want to go home. I'm glad you killed all the goblins. I hope you made them scared. Heldrell didn't want us, and those druids sure as hell didn't either. But you, you risked your life for us. We made it somehow. Now we just need to get to Baldur's Gate. Back to worrying about road rations it is. So many mouths to feed, but, well, that's not a bad problem to have. Thank you, truly. Thought you'd left us to our fate running off like you did. Glad I was wrong. One sorrow ended, the next soon to begin. We didn't die today. Tomorrow, perhaps, but not today. Thanks to you. Baldur's Gate, we're coming. We couldn't have held them back on our own. Thank you. Glad to see some goblin blood spilled for a change. I was sick of running from those rats. It was you, right? Who took care of the goblins? I knew you were a good one. I nearly dispatched those goblins myself, but it seems you managed well enough. And why wield a masterwork where a butcher's blade will do? My thanks, truly. So it's true. You scattered the goblins. Peace can finally return to this corner of the Sword Coast. Thank you. I'm just glad I could help. As am I. And I'm sure those poor refugees would quite agree. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place. Forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. An error, most grave master. I beg your grace. Grace is bestowed by nature, not me. You will stay as a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, the natural order of things. It is up to you to prove the lessons have been learned once more. So as you say, and so it is done, master. You have your hands full with her. She shows great spirit, to put it mildly. She shows great insolence. But time will humble her. And the Grove still needs her. You will soon see why. But enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands. Nature prevails. And again, I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. What happens next? The journey to Moonrise Towers, and all the dangers that that entails. But that's tomorrow's problem. Take some time for yourself tonight. Rest, celebrate. Come morning, I'll be by your side. I wasn't sure about you at first. Thought you might be trouble. I was very wrong. You've done it. You brought House in back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. Think nothing of it. I'm just glad Halson is safe. As am I. The Grove will be whole again. And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cache. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. Blessed day. I was worried I'd never see Master Halson again. You kept your word. Thank you. <laughs> You're just lucky I didn't swig that potion. Ha! Huh. 
Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do when you told me about that tadpole. <laughs> You're very welcome. I don't know if I can ever restore Sylvanus's peace to this place. But I'll have the chance. Thanks to you. Think of it. No more caves. No more tents. No more running away. We'll be in a city with roads and markets and homes. Look at them all. Guzzling poison like we've the right to be happy. We survived. That's always worth celebrating. Not everyone. We lost people, and it's like they don't even care. But I care. And I won't drink myself into a stupor to change that. Patience? Have you no respect for showmanship? Having performance issues, Roland. Hush you. And... Behold! Adoring applause? You're too kind. Remember when he could barely cast that? They grow up so fast. Never have I met such troglodytes. Now, pass the wine. I need to dance! <laughs> no. No, I need to lie down. Sherry! That's infernal for cheers. Or possibly turnip. Hope you're enjoying the night, hero. I certainly am. Cheers to many more like this. You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without. But even so, thank you. This might be the wine talking, but I'm feeling inspired. Thinking of writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? How about courage? Uh, classic song material. Fitting. You're braver than half this camp combined. That deserves to be remembered. You came through for us. That's a change from most adults, I know. <laughs> that sounded dangerously close to a compliment. And that sounds like the wine drowning your wits. Go on, enjoy yourself. I've squirreled away a few extra bottles. When the barrel's tapped out, I'll be there to save the night. For a price, of course. I have seen the Kithraki tear a screaming Neogi's legs from its belly to fashion into blades. Yet, they could not match your nerve today. It was enough to drive me to madness. I smell their blood on you still. I smell your moisture. How torturous for us both that I'll never get a taste. Oh, but do enjoy yourself this night. I intend to myself. Ah, Els. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. Of course I'd noticed. It's no party without you. Really? I'm honored. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood. And I didn't want to cast a grey cloud over the night. I'm a devil. I love the people from the grove, but... I unsettle them deep down, as I seem to unsettle everyone nowadays. You don't want a devil at your party. Horns this sharp will pop the balloons, you see. And the guests won't take kindly to scars quite so monstrous. I'm sorry it has you feeling rough tonight. I'll be fine. Seeing you has cheered me more than you can know. But, off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. I wish you were there. But I'll respect your need for peace. Some time alone beneath the stars and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made sure of that. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. Really? Saving lives is awful. 
We killed some goblins to save some tieflings. The tally of lives didn't change much. But what do I get for all my hard work? A pat on the head and vinegar for wine. <laughs> Here, give me that. It's a heavy, rich red. Dry and sharp. See what I mean? Awful. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? And what's your idea of a little fun? By the hells. Sex, my dear. A night of passion. Hmm. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Ugh, no. Ah. Anyway, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Refugees. Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. Not so odd. We did the right thing. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. We should have had wine more often. More warming than the fire. Would you look at this place? All these people, happy because of us. <laughs> it's nice to be somewhere where good is still possible. And with good potations too. Are you enjoying yourself? Fuck yes. I'm celebrating my freedom and our friendship and these folks' bright future besides. All I need now is a fire-retardant lover to get lost in till sunrise. Did you have parties like this in Avernus? Not so much. You spend the whole time avoiding swords and schemes. Plus, people just get nastier as the night wears on. I tried to make friends at first. Learned my lesson fast. Better to keep to yourself in hell. I do hope you enjoy yourself tonight, Karlak. You too, soldier. Enjoy yourself tonight. You've earned it. Beautiful night, don't you think? Nothing like a brush with destruction to make one appreciate the majesty of a celestial canvas. It's a view I would once have shared with my companion. Though definitely unaccompanied by such revelry. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. <laughs> Sounds, uh, fun. Oh, not everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara, my Tressim, assistant. My constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be most impressed by our efforts saving these tieflings. Proud, even. And I've given her little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. After so long being cared for by someone else, it feels good to have repaid the favor. Not directly to Tara, but to these poor tieflings. I'm sure she would approve. You must have been lonely, with only Tara for company. Sometimes. But I imposed it on myself, after all. I set up enough wards to keep an army at bay. Never mind the few colleagues who sought to inquire about my welfare. Tara did her best to keep my spirits up, of course, but there's only so much one Tressum can make up for one's entire social circle. She was often gone, seeking items to treat my condition. 
not the first person I've spent any significant time with in a year or more. Spending time in your company, I realize that I may have left behind the greater part of my wit and sensitivity in my tower. No one came to visit you during your confinement. Sadly not. If I'm being entirely honest, my social circle is rather small. More of a dot or a pinhead. I've got acquaintances, certainly. Plenty of colleagues, friends. Those are precious indeed. I hope that we've only known each other for a short time. I might be able to count you among that number. Friends with the mighty gale of Waterdeep? <laughs> I'd be honored. Ah, wine is to wit as meat is to... to... Oh, I can't bloody remember it. There I go then, proving your point. Perhaps we'd better leave it at that. My ineloquent tongue isn't worthy of your ear at present. Go, indulge in the frivolities. They're good for the heart. And mine will be all the lighter to see you enjoying yourself. Aha, there you are. Come now, settle in. I do hope you have partaken of something bracing. This may well take us all night. And by this, you mean? Why, your naming, quite obviously. That ballad was but a crude preview, a frame without its crowning jewel. Your nom de guerre. Something iconic, but not too much of a mouthful. We don't want to exclude the common folk, after all. I intend this tale to enrapture all. I didn't ask anyone to write my story. And do you think Volothemp Gedarm got where he did by waiting to be asked? No, no. It is for you to slay the dragons and for me to worry about the accolades. Actually, slaying a dragon would prove quite helpful, mind. Go on now. Don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll discuss your problem tomorrow. I thought you might care to have a drink with me. In truth, I rarely imbibe. The stuff goes right to my head. Before you know it, I'd be breaking into song or declaring love to the first person I laid eyes on. I fail to see the problem. Then you have never heard me singing, which makes you very fortunate. Perhaps there's something else you'd rather do then? Hmm, I'm sure there are. You strike me as extremely resourceful. But there are many grateful people here who want to spend time with you. I must not keep you all to myself. As enjoyable as that may be. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. Buzz of celebration quiets to a soothing hum as you approach your bunk. You've picked up a few pleasant memories on your journey amongst your struggles. I must push twisting thoughts of Shadowheart from my mind. I need to seek sleep. Her mind is certainly an enigma, but would you wish it any other way? I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done. And I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous. Though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. To Moonrise then. What's so dangerous about it? To get to the towers. You'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, 
tormented, dangerous souls. And the Absolute's forces can tolerate such a place. So it seems, though I don't know how. You will have to choose your approach carefully. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. What would you do? The decision is yours, but I'd favor the Underdark. Even a place like that is the lesser evil compared to the Shadow-Cursed Lands. So, how do I find this underground route? You'll need to pick it up where Aradin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. One of the adventurers had a clue to help find it. A dwarf called Brian. It might still be found on his corpse. Wherever the goblins left it. I never thought I'd say this, but... Sounds like the Underdark is the safer route. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. What about the Grove? I've chosen a successor as First Druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. Who? Huh? Precisely. Who indeed? You do not know, and neither do any of the others. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. It sounds like the Grove will be in good hands then. We should get going. Indeed. We've quite the journey ahead of us. Oakfather's blessings to you. At the celebration with the tieflings before, I hope I didn't come over too strong. I got caught up in the moment. <laughs> there are few things that are too strong for me. And cast those regrets aside. You did not get caught up in the moment. You seized it. In other circumstances, I would have done the same. You'd have done the same. Perhaps. But best to not dwell on nights past. There are plenty more yet to come. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. I have another here. Thank you. has any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Go on. You're among friends. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the Mother of Magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time she became my muse. And later even my lover. Bold. 
you would dare to reduce a goddess to their muse. I am, after all, the villain of the tale. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. How exactly did you try to cross those boundaries? I tried to convince her. I pouted, I pleaded, swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? I'm intrigued. Tell me all. Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. He almost managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A Netherese tone in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? And what was the answer to that question? The answer was to try. And the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power draped in romance would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry? How... How are you still alive? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Go on. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry. It'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. Is there nothing we can do? 
We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. We've come this far together, and we'll continue on together. This is how it will be. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. To think Gales had this devastating war within himself the entire time and only just mentioned it. Who'd keep a secret like that from his friends? He can't trust anyone these days. What do you think is waiting for us at Moonrise Towers? Who knows? Drow? Mind flayers? Death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers, if we can convince the right people to talk. Sir Gale's been walking around this whole time with some sort of magic bomb in his chest. I'm not normally one to begrudge someone their secrets, but that's something I should know. You seemed intrigued when Halson mentioned Dark Justicias before. Wouldn't you be in my place? If there's even the slightest chance that Shah worshippers remain within our reach, we should try and find them. Even if they're all long gone, and that seems quite likely from what we know, who knows what they may have left behind for us to use? My people are nothing if not resourceful. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, I've wished to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a dark justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm, her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling, but Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother mother, I should add. The Mother Superior, head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything. And I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. I don't understand. Why be so secret about such an ambition? Dark Justicias are hated by many, judged to be ruthless fanatics. Even the few who would accept a follower of Lady Shah would likely balk at a Justicia in their midst. But there's a simpler answer to your question. I simply forgot about the desire I had, until I saw some things that reminded me. Now, I can't get it out of my mind. Thank you for sharing. What do you think about what happened to the Druid Grove? I suppose some would commend our actions. Goblins would have raised that whole place to nothing if it weren't for us. No excuse to rest on our laurels, though. We've still got our own problems to contend with. And how am I holding up to your estimations? Quite splendidly, to give credit where it's due. You and I have shared some good times together, and it seems we have plenty in common. Has your research turned up anything that might help with this parasite problem? My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. Mm -hmm. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. 
I've a needle in my tunic, after all. This parasite is unusual. Um, I have it on good authority that extraction is currently impossible. But you won't find a more learned opinion on this matter, I assure you. Uh, I'm not so sure about this. You only have a matter of days to live. Don't dally, my friend. Wait. These markings. Tirsu script scratched in the ground. A crash must be nested in the temple below. We must go there at once. Tirsu script, you said. What does that mean? Githyanki writing. Every word a wheel. Every letter is spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. How do I know I can trust your people? You don't have to trust them. Only to trust me. I have not failed you yet, and I have no intentions of it now. I don't need you to believe me for it to be true. Come, let's go to the crash. Very well, you may lead. But if we stray too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. Ah, a friendly face. Oh, you are a sweet, sweet blessing, my dear. You know, I've had nothing but trouble all day. I've been accosted, chased, insulted. Look over there. Do you see that wretched little hive? It looks like a temple. Oh, it certainly looks that way. But inside, it is swarming with brutish, stupid, rude Githyanki. Brutish and rude by your wretched standards. But stupid. Chucky. Your charming companion would call it a creche. But it was built on what remained after the Githyanki slaughtered all of the monks. I'd call it a murderous training camp. Acutely observed on both counts. Honestly, I was doing them a favor offering to buy one of their eggs. And how am I repaid? Attacked and run off like some transient. Why would you want one of their eggs? The Society of Brilliance asked me to acquire one of their row so they can incubate it and once it hatches, raise the spawn in their tradition. Please, do enlighten me. What is this tradition? The society believes a Githyanki raised in a peaceful, nurturing environment can overcome its violent nature. I'm sure your friend would agree. A Githyanki is as likely to forsake its violent nature as a gnome is to fly. With a pure will and great courage, Anyone can rise above their nature. You've been sipping from the same goblet as the society. Perhaps you'd be willing to help, then, to prove your point. They may have chased me away, but surely the Gith would welcome a person with such sympathetic views to their crash. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. Steal one of Gith's own. I will slit your throat for even suggesting it. I'm not talking to you. You'll be well compensated, of course. Just bring me an egg. I'm not getting involved in this. Pity. You'd have become rather rich had you the proper sense. Should you change your mind, you know where to find me. Who oh, there, Wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if, perchance, you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? May I inquire who is inquiring? 
Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you, well, you may safely classify Gail and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown, I shall be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster. Elminster Omar. Now, if this answer satisfies you, let us linger no longer in this limbo of indecision, but settle on your knowledge of the individual I seek. I do know Gail, yes. He's in our camp at the moment. Uh, ever a man of leisure. Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? It would be my pleasure. And I would confirm it to be so. Please, after you. Thanks for your excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy the object of my pursuit. Elminster? The very same, Gail. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gail. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you will begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get out with it. I suppose we could part with a few of our rations. And a great kindness that would be. See, Gail, even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, father. Love of Fine, fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savoured so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Elminster. Right. Um, you see, I, um, well, that is to say, Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. What message and what charge would that be? The long-awaited question. Now, if you please, Elminster, for the too long-awaited answer. You know where you went wrong, Gail. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. If even the gods know, why are we facing these threats alone? They choose the instruments of their will with great precision. Sometimes the single drops we think we are do not realize what 
waves we are building up to be. Do not discount yourself. And by the same token, do not discount your enemy. You must know that the Absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. Gale alone? How so? The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help. Or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. That's monstrous. You're tasking him to kill himself. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece, and need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. There's still a long journey ahead. We'll find another way. Or some other fortune altogether. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. He didn't seem much a friend, showing up and demanding you kill yourself. It's not a demand he wanted to make of me. As mistress chosen, he had no choice but to deliver her message. However much it pained him to do so, for mistress to have sent him. The severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age. A year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. You're seriously considering doing what Elminster said? Of course. You offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. 
wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I, I don't understand. Can't Mistra just destroy the absolute? Or Elminster himself? I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. So that's it? You're on a suicide mission now? Possibly the most spectacular one ever conceived. But essentially, yes. I'm living on borrowed time in more ways than one. Perhaps. Perhaps this is how it must be. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. You're not blowing yourself up, Gale. I won't let you. Let's save such certainty for the moment such a decision is upon us. You may feel differently once we know what we're truly up against. How are you feeling? It can't be easy facing the possibility of death. Oh, you know me, never the optimist. I'm trying to focus on the positives. Truth is, I was living on borrowed time already. Consuming those items would only have kept the orb sated for so long. If anything, I feel more at peace than I have in months. At least now I know my death will have purpose. It won't be a distant bang in the footnotes of history. Is Mistra always such a demanding goddess? She expects those who seek to use the weave to do so honestly and with respect for its potential to destroy as well as its potential to save. I doubt she's asked many of her followers to blow themselves up. That's a fate she's bequeathed exclusively to me. She wouldn't ask such a thing if it weren't our only means of survival. However much she's annoyed at me. I was wondering about that mighty lord you told me about in your story. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god, to know yourself, to be untouchable, to be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost, and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more, an event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. So at that moment in time, all magic was gone. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsus, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History, repetition, it's the way things go. We'll talk more later. I can't believe Mistress demanding Gale sacrifice himself to destroy the Absolute. It's just a waste of a perfectly good cult that we could be controlling. And a waste of a perfectly good Gale, I suppose. A shame my first brush with the famed Elminster couldn't be a tad more optimistic. Listen, I might invoke the Triad from time to time, appeal to Helm, but I'm no man of faith. 
not like Gail. I don't know what drives a man to consider his own death among countless others to be an appropriate exchange for his goddess's forgiveness. To me, it all sounds like nonsense. The faith that matters most is that which you hold in yourself, in the ones that most matter to you. Big Bomb be damned. Gale's got everything he needs to defeat the Absolute already. Talent, nerve, and powerful allies at his side. I hope he'll come to see that. Oh, was that Gale's granddad? Uh, that was Elminster Omar, the most famous wizard in the realms. <sighs> it doesn't ring a bell. But all right. Must have had something important to say to Gale if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. I don't think it was. Turns out Gale has an explosive bomb in his chest. And Mistra has asked him to use it to blow up the heart of the Absolute. <laughs> Whoa, now, he's got a... Well... I guess that would explain a little, but... Mistra? <laughs> I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? I'm not sure. I, I think he's of several minds. Well, tell him to pick the right one. Well, better yet, I'll do it. <sighs> Fucking wizards, man. They always need help picking the simple, obvious option. If Mistra can't think of another way to stop the Absolute than sacrificing Gale, she's no god worth worshipping. I'll say that to Gale in, you know, gentle terms. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tirsu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. I can't believe Mistra actually expects Gale to just sacrifice himself like that. Seems like a waste of a fine mind. I can't believe I'm actually venturing into a Gith stronghold again, voluntarily. This had better pay off. I admit it. This could be a terrible idea. But we don't have much choice. True. We're acting out of desperation. Let's just be careful. Any potential cure is useless if our heads are parted from our shoulders beforehand. They must want that artifact back badly if they're dispatching red dragons in pursuit of it. But we cannot afford to lose it. I wish I'd never been sent on this mission. I'm curious about that myself. You'll have to live with that curiosity for now, I'm afraid. Let's just concentrate on ridding ourselves of these tadpoles. All will be revealed in due time. I hope. <sighs> hey, soldier, I... <sighs> well, I'm not feeling so good. <sighs> My engine... It's getting worse. Feels like it's going to burst out of my chest. <sighs> we need to catch up with Damon. See if he's thought of a way to fix this thing. If it can be fixed. Don't worry. We'll find him. I'm sure we will. <clears throat> but, in case we don't, a bit of advice. You leave your left flank wide open. If I'm ever not around to cover it, you may find yourself on the wrong side of a goblin spear one of these days. You wish to speak? I have to ask. How do you know so much about the parasite? I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Why do you want to go to Moonrise Towers? 
those illithid creatures threaten the natural order. It's my duty to do what I can to stop them. There's also the Shadow Curse. It's an affront and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thormund his Dark Justicius years ago, but I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. If I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse just as you find a cure for your infection. It seems like you feel responsible for this Shadow Curse somehow. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Do you know how the Shadow Curse can be stopped? Perhaps. But we'll need to get closer before I can put my theory into practice. Put it from your mind for now. Once we near the curse, then there will be more to be said. Very well. The crash must be nested in that temple. Our cure is close. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. You haven't been using the Parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Tell me who you are. It's complicated. But I'm an adventurer. Just like you. Just like you. I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you. I seek to be free of it. But to do that, we'll need to think beyond local healers. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsey knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. So how do I destroy the source of the tadpole's magic? I am not sure yet. To find the answers, we must first find the source. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. Why should I believe you? Because we share a common cause and a common enemy. We are alike. You and I. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. What's going on over there? The power I used to protect you. I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. 
Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. I had another dream last night. The visitor came to me and ordered me to penetrate the heart of the very cult that's spreading the infection. It gave me a tadpole gift too, just like it did the first time it appeared. I suppose it hoped this would help. At first, I thought we should avoid these gifts no matter what advantage we gain. And yet, I can't help recall the words of my father. The best plan is the one that works. These powers could be enough to edge us towards victory. <sighs> I'd sooner avoid these powers if we can. I feel like we're being led into a trap. Then we'd do well to walk around it. Use these powers sparingly, if you must use them at all. I've been dreaming of our enigmatic visitor again. She told me our purpose was to take on this cult of the Absolute, to infiltrate its ranks and bring it down from the inside. This source she referred to and the heart of the Absolute might be one and the same. I no wish to cast any aspersions on our existing skill set, of course, but given the perilous direction in which our journey is headed, the Tadpole's powers might be a welcome addition to our arsenal. That remains to be seen. I still don't trust this Dream Visitor's intentions. I suppose you're right. We still see only a part of the picture, however much our visitor claims to show the full vista of options at our disposal. I can't deny my curiosity, but, as you say, no harm in delaying it, for now at least. I had another visit from that dream figure. I take it you did too. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. I don't like it. This whole thing feels like a trap. Hmm. On the one hand, you're right. On the other, don't be so wet behind the ears. Did you actually want something, or are you just here to spoil my fun? Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. This feels like a trap. I don't think we should indulge this dream visitor at all. Agreed. A bit of shiny armor doesn't impress me that much. I don't want to get taken in by a pretty offer and pay the price later on. I had another dream. Which, I suppose, means you did as well. Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the Absolute, but wants us to embrace the Tadpole. Venture right into the heart of the cult. Perhaps we truly have a secret protector. Or we're walking into a trap. Another dream. Another order from that dubious visitor. It announced that we will find the answers we seek in the Absolute Cultist's lair, and offered another generous gift. A persuasive creature. It tempts us with power, expresses its admiration, its adoration. Avert your eyes whenever it appears, and do not avail yourself of this new power, no matter how alluring. You've no idea what damage it could do to us. How far into illithid madness it could drag us. I distrust the visitor too. I'll avoid using this power. Well chosen. Battles are won with swords, not mind games born of brain worms. And there will come a battle. Of that I'm most certain. The one truth that fell out of the dream figure's cankered lips. <laughs> What? That's enough! On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. 
No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now! The captain is expecting you. Forward. Carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. Intruder! In my nest! This area was meant to be safe! Xavier, get behind Mummy! I'm just interested in the big device. I promise not to meddle with the nest. Nest meddling lies! I thought as much. The monastery's notable keepers adorn these intricate panels. Lathandarian monasteries of this size were usually overseen by dawn masters, esteemed members of the clergy. Dawn master seed. The reconsecration of the monastery, conducted by dawn master seed. Dawn master stockhold. Even song before the zenith day, celebrated by dawn master stockhold. Dawnmaster Welking Glory. Dawnmaster Welking Glory beckons forth the rising sun in Lathander's name. Ha! Ah, it's broken glass. Dawnmaster Vasaid wielding. The rest of the inscription and picture has shattered away. Sentries to arms! Istic, state your purpose quickly! Stand down, Gish. Is it not Vlacketh's command to welcome her faithful? I expected no visitors faithful or otherwise. Why have you come? I am on your side. Captain Voss sent me to find an item for you. What are you doing? You've talked to one of our Queen's Silver Knights and hold the lost weapon. Prove it, Istik. I was told to bring the weapon to the highest authority possible. That doesn't look like you. If you are lying, it'll be a painful death. The Inquisitor is deeper in the crash. Report to the Captain. She will take you to the Inquisitor. 